<laughs> All right, this evening we are going to be having an in-depth knowledge of what Christmas is all about. And my name is Ibukolo Adesoye, and I just want to give honor to whom honor is due. Thank you so much, Papa. Thank you so much, Mama, for giving us this privilege to just stand here and moderate this panel session. So even me, I want to know what Christmas is all about. And I'm going to be calling on three amazing people who have done research. These people did not sleep. They did not sleep. They've been researching about it. So please, as I call them individually to come here and sit, you have to give them a rounding applause. And we already know our culture here to celebrate people. Please put your hands together for the very first person I'll be calling. Sister Kemi Adesoye. Come on now. Oshé. We love the energy. Keep it up, keep it up, keep it up. Anywhere you want to see it, we are ready. Okay. The second person I'm going to be calling to come up here. Because the person has... See, anywhere you catch him, he's ready. He is born ready. Please put your hands together for Pastor Bola Adu. Hey, come on now. The last but certainly not the least. You know this person is meticulous. In fact, I don't even know what else to say. She's ready, born ready, ladies and gentlemen. Pastor Bridget. Keep clapping, keep clapping, keep clapping till she gets here. Uh uh. See that they've not come with writing materials because they are ready. They've been studying. Uh uh. The only material here is the Bible. Hallelujah. May I have my own material? <laughs> All right. So we're going to be having an amazing conversation most definitely please if you have questions or i'm not asking the questions that you want feel free to just raise up your hand and please give your notes to charity please can you just raise up your hand, sister love all right um this panel session is going to be as interactive as possible because they rehearsed no not rehearsed they studied uh -huh. they studied doesn't mean there is no knowledge in each and every one of us. So we're going to be passing the mic around. Can we have an extra mic that would go around? Yes. Christmas, Christmas, Christmas. The festive season that has definitely given the blanket to the world. You know, there's so much giving in this period. There's so much love in this period. But do people really know the meaning of Christmas? Do they know why we celebrate Christmas? You hear people, in fact, in my area, they don't, they do bag, 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 bang, 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 they knock, knock out, be disco, you know, fireworks. But there's, there's so much more to Christmas than the surface, the surface meaning. And that is what we're going to be doing today. So, before I ask the people here. Please, where is our mic? All right. Let's try and just call out some myths about Christmas. Growing up, you know, for me, growing up, Christmas was all about buying new clothes. So. As an adult now, I mean, I don't need to buy new clothes for Christmas. But if you bought new clothes, if your parents bought new clothes for you, please, let me. Is that the only time? New clothes, new shoes, new hair. You know, for the ladies, you decorate your hair and everything. Yes, eyeglass, those shiny ones. I know, I know. So please, we also want you to share some meat. Like, growing up, how was Christmas for you? Also, in my house, pounded yam was certain. Pounded yam for Christmas. Yes, we used to... Pounded yam with, um, what's it called now? Sweet potato. So it has a bit of sweetness in it. Oh, Lord, Christmas was amazing. So please, we have to pass the mic around. Though. It's not only my house that used to celebrate Christmas. Okay, so, yes. With a furry row, LME made Come on. With the mama, the shaki, the door inside. Jonah, please tell us, how did you celebrate Christmas when you were growing up? Well, for, yeah. for me. <laughs> How just, was Christmas growing just like, up? Just like you said, actually, um, it was a time where we, we, you know, you, you have your family coming, 
together people that are not um, are not there they travel down you know that's that's the time you feel love around you know we bond together and it's a time of eating rice rather than stew <laughs> you know and it 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 was always fun when when you when you see people that you've not seen for maybe like a year or two years you know just coming together to to bond to play with you know and have fun so yeah. it, for me it was growing up it was fun but for now, it's just it's just one of those things. Yeah. <laughs> no, you don't grow up, Abby. Please pass the mic to Sister Martina behind you. Yes. Christmas. Tell us about Christmas. And you know something about Christmas as well. You know, no matter how you eat rice during the week, that Christmas rice was different. The stew was different. It felt like there was Christmas inside. <laughs> Sister Martina, Christmas growing up. Ah, it was fun because... If uh, Malena not buy rice, that will not do our hair. Hmm. Because I remember we always have this uniform cloth. Everybody in the house, we have the same kind of cloth. <laughs> and the cool. same red meat. Uh -huh. yeah. Then if there is no chicken in that, in the <laughs> rice, well, I don't do. okay. The other one is, before she started the preparation, we just tell her, that's uh, stock. We want to do mix it with Gary to heat before she will use it to cook the main <laughs> stew. So that one is like a fight in the house. So if she doesn't do that one, then she will just do extra so that because you know everybody wants that stock to add to Gary before the main uh, rice thing. Then I hear we'll this go, one. We <laughs> will now go to family's place, at least from one family to the other. I remember one Christmas that on our way, for the funny thing, on our way, my, my shoe, the, the heel pulled the off on our way. I was like, God, ah, this Christmas. <laughs> but in all that, it was fun. And it was um, a time of getting to know more people, a time of um, merriment, and a time of visiting friends and family. Then it, money must follow when you are coming back. Of course, <laughs> of course. Thank you very much for that. Let, let's move to this side. Mrs. Ojo, tell us about Christmas <laughs> growing up. Okay, now. <laughs> As usual, that Christmas rice and chicken is always there. Yes. Then the funny thing, or what we have always been looking up to, is when you want to share to the neighbors. Yes. You, know, you, you come back with money. So you're always looking for the basket, how to wrap it. Not even the rice inside, but the money you're going to, <laughs> to collect. And you know, the Christmas clothes, you know, the banga, all those stuff. Okay. So it was fun. All right. Thank you very much. Please, a round of applause. A round of applause. Wow. I, I'm, I'm particularly excited because I have four elder brothers, and we used to fight on who would go and distribute. We lived in an estate before we moved to our house. So we used to fight because we know the people that will give you money. We will now line up in front of our mommy. Mommy, please, I'm going to the Oloyede's house. <laughs> now, we, now we go go there, you know. But it was just really fun. And as children, we really did not know if Jesus, we shall know Jesus was born today. So every year, Jesus was born on the 25th, Abby. Well, we are going to demystify all of that today, Pastor Bridget. Christmas. Share with us your experience growing up. Christmas. They've said it all. <laughs> <laughs> really and truly. Um, I think for me, the fun part was always looking forward to seeing you know, everyone come around, yeah. people you've not seen, all the IJ, I just got back. I just got, I you know, JB, yeah, I did. Yeah. JB, yeah. yeah, so everyone's coming back. As we, uh, 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 yeah, yeah, let's just be, <laughs> you know, and then money will go around. Oh, thank you for coming. You, you know, need to, so buy you need to buy chewing gum and all that. <laughs> but then I think the not so fun part is when you're the one that has to cook. Up yeah, and watch <laughs> but then funnily, funnily, on that, it's your, there's this, joy like you're just you know you don't you're tired you know you're not so tired that day you know you're not so tired you know there's this joy like oh i've cooked for my whole family you know there's just this you know you're happy about it so yeah so christmas yeah christmas always had that um and jello fried but not pounded yeah plenty jello fries plenty jello fries okay <laughs> pastor i do how about you like, uh, growing up one of something i remember during Christmas that my dad usually take us to cinema, to National Theatre. Wow, and really? So, yes. So, and, um, so we, we have, we will prepare for it because we know that we're going to eat suya, then we'll watch at least one 
play, whether from Ogunde or something. We will just, so he will take all of us. And uh, so Christmas for, for me, even if there's no food, we just were looking up to go out with him for those um, periods. So it's, it's, a, it's really a memorial for me during those. So even if we don't go to church, in court, because then I know my dad didn't go to church. So even we will go to church and come back, we know that he's ready for us to go out. <laughs> so the Christmas for me is really, really a memorial season. Okay. Sister K, Christmas. Um, it's just like everybody else's. You know, everybody is well-dressed. You know, there's excitement in the air. Friends and family gather, people you haven't seen in a long time, especially relations, come to the house. Um, and going to church was always one of the, uh, you know, the, the, it was definite. You have, you have to, to go to church. showcase your clothes. You have, ah, yes. <laughs> you, you have to go in your Christmas best and check each, check each other out. Um, there's one thing that uh, my mom used. She did it to my siblings. I was too wise. She would tell them, Father, Christmas came. And then um, they will see that they'll say, ah, see the cup he used when he came. And they'll be waiting up night. Okay, when is he going to come? He said, ah, unless you sleep now. And then they'll wake up and they'll say, here's the evidence. See the cup he used to drink, his milk and the plate he used. And like, wow. And then they ask, we don't have chimney because the story always says, exactly. they say, well, he comes through the window. I don't know for Africa, he does it differently. And then we used to have a um, Christmas tree. And the tradition, of course, we borrowed it from European you know, culture. You put, before Christmas, you'll be putting presents. If anybody brings presents for the family, it, so the Christmas tree will just be filling with presents. And then you are waiting for Christmas morning to open it, usually after church service. You know, and then you come and then you open it. And you know, the Christmas has started. You know, everybody get their gifts, eat rice, and everything. Praise happy. the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wow. My mother. Our own Christmas tree was. It was filled with noodles carton that was wrapped because the gift was the clothes you are wearing. There was nothing, nobody was eager to go to the Christmas tree and because there's nothing there. We are the ones that wrap the empty box. <laughs> but I mean, that, that, that's so amazing. That's so amazing. Jesus was born on the 25th of December. Wow. He was? Tell us about it. Because I mean, that's what a lot of people feel. That 25th of, Christmas, uh, 25th of December was when Jesus was born. What are your thoughts? Okay, so we... I'm sure we know here, and I remember Papa, you know, those asides that he does, like yeah. he just, you know, and he mentioned that, you know, 25th, 25th of December was not the, historically speaking, it was not the day. Thank God that Papa is here. <laughs> We're talking about the essence of Christmas, not the history, <laughs> but no, Christmas is a holiday, you know, just to um, celebrate, you know, so Christmas, the mass of Christ, right? Mass, what does mass mean? Service, um, celebration, service, you know. So it's, it's a Roman thing. It, it just, you know, we just found out that we are, we're celebrating that, you know, that moment. But of course, that the 25th of December in history is not the actual time that, um, you know, that Jesus was born. I think it was even earlier, like maybe somewhere around April, May. Wow. Yeah. Well, see, it's nodding. So yeah, <laughs> I think I know that one. So I think it was really earlier in that time. But then, um, yeah. Um, so if you if you study, you know, down um, one Roman something something, they used to celebrate something else. You know, at that time, I, I yeah, they used to celebrate something else about light and all that. So of course, then the church. The Roman, you know, church at the time, the king, yeah, now, you know, came up and said, you know what? Because at the time they wanted to, you know, wipe off all the pagan, all those, you know, meats. So they now began to, you know, celebrate the birth, you know, of Christ um, around that period. So it's just a holiday, you know, just, um, of course, we know that we celebrate Jesus 
every day so but then that this holiday and it, it's so it's so significant in you know you're talking about love celebration joy that's the that's what G, you know, the, the birth of jesus that's what it's all about that's what his birth the meaning of his birth that's what his birth, you know goodwill to all men love joy peace so it's in the air you always you just sense it that there's just a lot of love there's just a lot of joy a lot of celebration you know a lot of rejoicing in the atmosphere some people of course have taken it you know to now they they now forget about the actual celebration and then it's now about the you see christmas lights some that competition for some people now christmas yes. is how if you decorate decorate <laughs> who decorated their house best you know and all that i see all that so yeah so yeah pastor Adu, what are your thoughts on the 25th of december if you want to shed more light to it from your perspective um, thank you um 25th of december like we actually say is is to mark the birth of a savior. Not really because uh, that, was that was the day. But even at that, other religion tried to um, see if they could um, demystify the day. In terms of, you know, if you check very well, every, virtually every continent, that day is holiday. But one word or the other, in the, um, the Middle East, thereabout, they try to ensure that it is not celebrated just because they want to demystify the mark of the birth of Jesus, as it were. So it's not really the essence. And if you check the Western world, they actually celebrate without the, the true essence of the birth of the Savior. So meaning that you could see Santa Claus, gifts and all that and yet don't celebrate the essence of the birth of the savior so one word or the other you can you can shift it's just like if you go for a naming ceremony and after you have eating and all that like that maybe when you are going home is when you remember that was the name of the baby <laughs> And the, and the reason why you were there. <laughs> so, different, you know, the religion tried to see how they could um, demystify that. But the essence of Christmas is Christ. So, if we move it from that, so even if we do all the celebration, we do all the sharing of gifts without the essence of Jesus. It doesn't count. So what really counts is that Jesus was born, he was given to us, and he was given in a stage of our life. So because of that, you see that because down there was mark for him, love flows one way or the other. So people can either take the love to the extreme, but one way or the other, you can't, if you check every other holiday, it can never be compared to that. Even Thanksgiving Day. When I mean Thanksgiving, we don't, we don't celebrate Thanksgiving Day here. But if you see how they put emphasis on Thanksgiving Day in the Western world, you will know that they are trying to mark up, but they cannot. So the essence of Christmas is the birth of Jesus. Wow, thank you. Sister Kevin, you're going to also you know, add your two cents, but you know when you mentioned Thanksgiving, honestly, I haven't really bothered to check the s the meaning like researched on it but everything i see on social media is all about turkey chicken food and people sitting around the table and just you know feasting so how they try to connect it i, I mean when 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 we, we talk about the western world they are very heavy on you know celebration giving and all of that and missing out on the essence just as you have said and you know christmas holiday um movies now they are so you know they are so rampant and they check out the movies you've seen there is no connection to christ it's all about snow presents somebody falls in love family i really and i don't know why we need we, we, we need to take over that mountain, entertainment, to reorientate people because they are losing the essence, the birth of Christ. 
Okay. You put me on the spot there. <laughs> um, oh, <fine>. Apology. <laughs> because um, I was asked to write a story about Christmas. Hmm. And uh, it's called a Niger Christmas. And it, what happened was that, or what's happened to Christmas is that they have tried to, they, in a way, they have succeeded in commercializing it. Yeah. So that's why you hear now stories of Father Christmas, uh, Chimney, uh, Rudolph the wet Snow, all those things, yeah. you know, and, and the message of Christ gets lost in it. The best I could do was at least have a church, have a church environment there. Because there's, how can there be Christmas and there's no at least church or celebration or just, just to, to kind of just lean it towards that side, you know. But um, as, as she said, uh, Pastor said, the essence um, has been, you know, been taken away because they are trying to commercialize it. However, unbelie no, not unbelievers, other religions, they do deliberately do not celebrate Christmas because they know what it really stands for. Mm. You know, so they don't say, oh, it's just another festival. Mm -mm, no, they don't do that. But we sometimes... Well, not us in this church, but the world outside, they, you know, they try to just, you know, let's leave Jesus out of it. That's why even when you listen to some carols, they're talking about snow and the old gentleman at the door knocking. And, you know, and if you, after a while you, you, you listen to some Christmas songs, you start knowing that, okay, this one leans towards Christ, this one doesn't. You know, that's how you start to filter that, you know, what's the message in this one? This one is remove Christ out of it, and it's just celebration. So um, I think as um, Christians, we should just be sensitive to that. That's right, all. Right. All right. Thank you so much. Um, Pastor Bola Hawk, how do we now change this narrative? Because, I mean, if I should just go around and ask children, okay, um, how, excited are, uh, how excited are you about Christmas? They are looking forward to what they will wear. And if they don't wear good clothes, <laughs> it's going to be, you know, they will give you an attitude. They would scream. They would not be happy. That is also losing the essence of Christmas, which is the birth of Christ, which is supposed to be celebrated, not just during that period, but I mean, we should, it should resonate throughout the year. So how do we change that narrative? How do we, you know, educate, enlighten the younger ones? Okay, thank you very much. Uh, I believe that um, to enlighten the younger ones, start with us. What's our emphasis on Christmas? Like, I. You should not buy clothes. We no, should no, not. No, no, you will do all that, but let the center see the okay. Christ. Let it be sandwiched with Christ. Mm. Let it be covered in any way or the other. <laughs> do you understand? So even if we're celebrating, we're doing all that, still bring Christ in. Even if when friends come, see bring Christ in. So they already know from every door the other that Christ is still the center. So even if, oh, we're going out and all that like that, we still talk about it. Right. Right. Okay. We talk about it. We, our friends come around or our neighbors, you know, oh, God bless you. Jesus, the essence of, just by passing. You one word the other, the, your children are seeing that the essence is not really the clothes. You, you bought them the clothes. So it's not really that you don't have the money to buy the clothes. But in buying the clothes, in taking them out, in all that, you see, talk about Christ. Yeah. That is the essence. That if you remove it, that the it, it that is like a pivot. That if the center is not holding, it cannot balance. Yeah. So we allow them to know in everything we do in the celebration that there's a balance and Christ is the balance. Yeah. And one word or the other, the best time to also win people over in love is in this season. 300 mandates. Yes. 300 mandates. Just there to put that in. Auntie Kemi. Um, just to add to what Pastor Balahon said, um, the essence and, you know, Christmas, a way to keep children, you know, really on par and in tune with Christmas. You, you cannot celebrate Christmas without coming to church. 
or without telling the stories of the nativity. There are certain stories that we should never get tired of. The birth of Jesus, the nativity, the play, all those things. They never get old because there is drumming into them that is not just party. But we're going to hear this story again that Jesus was born um, the, in the manger, the wise men, the star that they, all those things are essential. You know, because um, there, there are some places that they don't even teach, you don't teach them consistently, they'll forget that this is Jesus' birthday and what happened, and Mary, and all that is building their faith as they grow. And it is a continual thing, Every, especially on Christmas Day. Always an opportunity, or else it's just eating rice, wearing good food, going out. But if there's not that time in which you must hear that story, you will never get tired of it consistently, consistently, because it builds, it builds a strong foundation in the children. Okay, sorry, I just want to, you know, piggyback on what, you know, they've said. I think it really takes a lot of intention, you know, from us. Because really and truly, um, you know, when, when we, when the church, when Daylight, when we brought the topic, the true essence, I was like, oh, that's true. Like, we saw, even in the church, that's, you know, you know, trickled into the church. Like, we've forgotten yeah. why Christmas really is, you know. So, this is actually, like, a reorientation for us to go back and say, okay, this is... This is why we celebrate. This is the reason for the season indeed. You know, I think it really takes a lot of intention from, from, from us and for us. You know, um, definitely the message of Jesus is that he came, you know, for God so loved the world, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his son. So Jesus came. What was the, what's the, what's the reason for his coming? That all men will be saved. And like our play, just believe, if you just believe, you will be saved, you know? So really and truly, I think it will take a lot of intention. So even as a family, you know, when, we, when we're going out and, you know, sharing, so it's, it's for us to actually not lack that, not always have that, uh, you know, at the forefront. This is actually the time to win people over. Because all the Christmas gifts without the presence of Jesus is just activity, you know? It's just, it's just we're just giving, you know? He is the present. He is the actual, the real present, you know, really and truly. Because at this time, <laughs> he is the, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, so he is, yes, he is the actual present, you know, really and truly. And at this point, to be honest, a lot of people have let their guards down. They're just, you know, so they will, when you come and say, hey, it's like they will just receive you with, oh, and it's actually the time to just, Jesus. The reason why I'm doing this is because of Jesus. You know, the reason is because Jesus, someone came and died for you. Someone came and brought joy, love, peace, you know, all that. So I think it's really a lot of reorientation at this time. And when we, are, we do it together as a family, as a group with our children, it will really, you know, it will do a lot. It will do a lot. So yeah. You see, I'm, I'm always so excited towards the end of the year because I always look forward to Starlight's, you know, Christmas yeah. Uh, play and it's always a time to also reorientate ourselves anybody remember my book of bible stories that yellow yeah. remember i can see people nodding yeah. yes do you remember some of the stories inside uh, do your the people that have children do your children do they know the stories I mean, it is, it is so important. Um, my sister Kemi made mention of, you know, Bible stories. It is so, so important to also, you know, get these children involved so that they do not miss it and miss out. Because whether we like it or not, the essence of Christmas is fading. And with social media, with so much activity, with the state of the nation, you just get lost in it all. So we have to be deliberate, as uh, Pastor Bridget has said. We have to, you know, be intentional about the things we do and how we go about it. Let us... Pardon? It's all about pajamas photo shoots now. Pajamas <laughs> photo shoots so with the family. Ah, really, that's what's as in if you're not doing, yeah, on that Christmas, as in if you're not doing pajamas photo shoot, you have not celebrated. You're not Christmas. celebrating Christmas. You know, nobody's really talking about yeah. the essence of Christmas. Yeah. Funnily, like, I'm just like, actually. Yeah. It's all about Christmas photo shoots. I'm just realizing that actually nobody's really saying, talking about, everybody's just, oh, joy to, hey, Christmas photo shoot. Hey, whose house are we coming to? Yeah. Nobody's really talking about it. I'd we need to do better. Yeah. Tell your neighbor, I need to do better. Yeah. Tell, point to them now. Yeah. You need to do better. <laughs> we all need to do better. We yeah. all need to do better. 
Uh, there was even a conflict one time, I think some years ago, where in America they were debating whether instead of saying Merry Christmas, they should just say Happy, Happy Holiday. Happy Holiday. You yeah. know, trying to just remove Jesus and let's, yeah. like, let's make it for everybody. Xmas. Xmas. That happy yeah, holiday that, that you know, so that we involve everybody. Yeah. Ah, no, no, no. no. Yes. No. <laughs> we, we need to be intentional. Merry Christmas. And the essence of Christmas is Jesus, Christ. is Christ. So we need to do better. Yes. We need, I need to do better. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, Sister Kemi threw shade at Father Christmas. <laughs> Our Santa Claus. Really? Please, you need to you know, explain further. Why shouldn't we believe in Santa Claus? The children, do you believe in Santa Claus? Oh. <laughs> I don't think in this day and age. <laughs> I mean, but then we, we, we see Santa Claus, you know, giving gifts we, and all we, of we that. See, no, it's, um, <laughs> it's putting me in trouble. Okay. It's just like Christmas tree. The only tree in the Bible... <laughs> The tree that Jesus died on, and you, all, you know, but they, we never talked about Christmas tree. Mm. This came from a different um, culture. Right. The Germans, and it came t- to Europe, and we adopted it from the Western culture and decorated it. Mm. You know, it wasn't, it's not biblical, but it's allowed. Okay. You know, it's, uh, this, I mean, it's a, exactly it's just part of the celebration so we're not saying you should uh, throw away all the christmas songs that you feel christ is not there you know anything related to christmas that in christ we didn't say we should remove it but you know just keep the essence the real essence father christmas is not in the bible it's not in the bible you know, but as a child, they'll take us to see Father Christmas. We'll be screaming because this is a very strange man in a dark room. And then he'll give us we'll, one, one, you know, with white beard. And we'll like, ah, and then he'll give us ho, ho, ho. I'll say, oh, who is this? What is this? It's like, oh, Juju Calaba. And then, no, it's true now. <laughs> exactly. But it's become part of the fun. The history of Father Christmas was apparently, they call him all sorts of names. Um, Santa Claus. Um, I hear that one is from Netherlands. That's another country. That's what they call him. Another, another name they call him is Saint Nick because um, it was modeled under a Saint Nicola, Nicholas in the time when they used to worship saints. And apparently they are not even sure whether this saint existed or not. You know, so, ah, so and then the commercial people decided, let us sell Christmas by pushing Santa Claus. And not only that, they gave him reindeers, which we don't even have in Africa. Yeah. Yeah, and they gave the reindeer yeah. names. Yeah. And gave one a red nose. And yeah. gave and said that uh, the vehicle of choice for Santa Claus is a sleigh. All those things that you see, we don't, we never see, most of us have never seen a sleigh before in real life. <laughs> but they have so commercialized and so pushed it so pushed it that ah you know um sorry i forgot the initial <laughs> question but just about but, i mean but, father christmas but, but that's Santa just Claus. it's harmless so right. as long as we're not watching him being him and say oh god santa claus father yeah. christmas make my wish come true yeah i want a bicycle yeah. this christmas exactly <laughs> you know as long as we still know who god is and our savior okay. we're good okay. Did, did anybody, please be honest, you saw Father Christmas growing up? Please. And the adults. No, no. <laughs> Father Christmas. Anyone. anyone they will put, um, you know, these stoves now. They put yeah. stove, uh, what's it called now? Mm-hmm. Woo. Did you see Father Christmas growing up? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did it scare you? But then again, as you said, they've commercialized Christmas so much that, I mean, yeah. <laughs> She's still holding a grudge because the toy Father Christmas gave her was not working. But then again, I mean, Father Christmas, and even, even, even children these days, they would love to see Father Christmas. But, Pastor Bolao, what are your thoughts on Father Christmas, really? Really? There's nothing wrong with Father Christmas. <laughs> Provided... I said, there's nothing wrong with Father Christmas. Some, some feminists will say, ah, why can't we have Mother Christmas? Yeah, well, if they can create it <laughs> and commercialize it, 
and make a strong case for it. You know, because the truth is that I think uh, is people fading the room with Father Christmas. If you ask the uh, children, how many of them really want to? They will ask you, what, what is it going to give us? You know, in our time, we want to look up, we are looking out for it because, yeah. you know, there's a way our parents project it. And, um, you know, even if you don't even trust the toy, the what surround it yeah. is fun for us. But the younger generation, they look at it. Uh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Except if you are going to, you know, maybe modernize it to another way in which it to be attractive for them. To me, there's nothing wrong in it. The essence of it is after you've done that, what next? Mm. You have seen the Father Christmas. Mm. You have, you understand? There must be something that we're putting behind it after the fund, because Christmas is not only 2050 alone. Yeah. That's why some people will get drunk that day and lose their life. So, but if our focus is that even with this, we want Jesus to be the gift. So, as we go out, we can even talk, we can even preach to the Father Christmas itself that you have not given your life. Away. The main person, the, the person behind this that you are all commercializing is, is Jesus. You understand? So when we do that, one way or the other, we catch the phone and we bring the SS. We drive it in one way or the other. Thank you. Sorry, Thank isn't you it amazing much. that Father Christmas will come and go, but Jesus still remains. Right. Yeah. Glory to God. Amazing. <laughs> Glory to God. I don't know if anyone has questions. We're going to be wrapping up shortly. If you still have questions you want to ask about the essence of Christmas, the true meaning of Christmas, please signify. Do we have any questions? Okay. Can we have the mic to Mama? Okay. Oh, okay. Can we have the mic? Okay. Happy belated birthday. Her Yay. birthday was yesterday. Double digit. Yay. My question is, why do we celebrate Christmas? Okay. When, when did you enter the <laughs> hall? Because you've answered that. But we're going to reiterate just before we finish. You have two questions. Okay, that's one. Two. What is like the true meaning of Christmas? Okay, that's okay. That's almost like the same thing. Why do we celebrate Christmas and the true meaning of Christmas? Okay. All right. Um, who else has a question? Okay. What brought this topic of Santa Claus? The history. The history of Santa Claus. Yes. Wow. You are not listening. <laughs> Go and Google. <laughs> Okay, some somebody in the audience would answer because I mean I'm sure we were all attentive. All right. Okay. Okay, now my question goes this way. In case like me now, when I was growing up, I didn't experience all this Christmas because I was born in Sabbath. So basically we practice You were born in Sabbath. Sabbath yeah. Basically we practice Judaism. Sabbath. Only Sabbath. Oh. Only Sabbath. Yeah. Seventh day. No. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So basically okay. we practice Judaism, something like that. So when I moved in with my auntie, so first time they bought clothes for me, I asked for, it says it's my Christmas clothes. I was like, Christmas clothes for what? Why are they celebrating? Say, so, because we don't celebrate Christmas. Not only apart from New Year and all their feasts of Passover, all these things. So I was like, what is it? Say, it's, uh, that's your Christmas clothes. Now, she was Catholic. I said, okay. And what like, do you say, yeah, until you you wear it and go to church. Okay, I, that day, during the evening time, she saw me wearing the clothes. I was playing football with the clothes. <laughs> so she was like, Do you know how much I bought these clothes? <laughs> I said, hey, Now, today has gone. This is evening. <laughs> so I, I'm trying to say, like, We are not celebrating it then. So, is there anything like, if a believer don't celebrate Christmas, something like that? No? Is there any, is, is, it, is it something like us? The argument is really out there, it's very, very strong. Like, if you are speaking with someone that, Pricing, Judaism, or other, apart from Christian, this is a very, very serious challenge. Like, you'll be like, 
Uh, what are you? You are just celebrating something the Roman just brought in. Just is about the light of something like that. So for you now to defend it, they ask, okay, was it recovered in the Bible or just use the biblical aspect? To exp- I was like, uh, what can you do? At the point, I'll just walk away. And believe me, I'm a good argumentator. Like, I like to argue normally. I was like, uh, okay, don't worry, I'll come for you. Or something like that. I'll just, I'll just walk away. So is there any other, apart from celebrating it, or should we, if you don't celebrate, is there anything significant if you don't celebrate as a believer? Is there anything? Okay, thank you. All right, would that be all? I think that was Mama's question as well. All right. Christians celebrating Christmas. Um, <laughs> from where he's talking from, I, I understand because I had uh, I have a friend who is Seventh Day Adventist, and they showed up on Christmas Day, not to greet me Christmas, so just say hey, we're passing, just say hello, and we were on our way to church. Okay. And even the wife was like, ah, "I told you you shouldn't have come because it's Christmas." We were so so that's when I knew that Seventh Day Adventist people do not celebrate Christmas. Christmas. How, uh, however, this couple they are saved. They speak in tongues. If anything happens, they'll go to heaven. They believe in Jesus. They go to church. They preach the word. They preach salvation. So if they don't want to celebrate Christmas as bad, the whole Christmas thing is their choice and it's allowed. I don't think it's a sin to not celebrate Christmas as long as you carry Jesus in your heart because that's the most important thing is having, making Jesus your Lord and Savior, having a relationship with him. That is more important than, you know, you, you know, yeah. yes, because by being a child of God, you are celebrating Him every day in a way, you know. So and worshiping Him every day. It's not just one day we decide to worship Jesus, you know. So I feel uh, if that is what they are comfortable with because of the upbringing and the doctrine, is I think it's okay. But um, well, uh, you know, as we're talking about, I just remember when. Um, Jesus was born and the heaven were rejoicing. And, um, you know, it was declared that the earth cannot rejoice because the Savior was born. So, is and that day was not marked December 25th. So, and there was a celebration about the Savior. So, to me, even if we move it from December 25th, anyway, another date, it is still celebration about the essence of Jesus. So it's not really about 25th or not. It's not only um, seven days alone. I think if you have been in, in the church for a while, for like 30 years now, people have been doing retreats on that day. And they'll finish a day. On the 25th of December. Yes, they'll start 24th and they'll finish 26th. So everybody in, that you are committed to that church, you just know that your Christmas is celebrating in retreats. So, and we will not say that they are not, they are not going to heaven. You understand? The essence of, of Christmas is Christ. And everyone that plug into that, whether you plug in from the end or you plug in from the middle or from the extreme. So, and you, whether you commercialize it or you desire me that day. I remember when I was also growing up that I just got born again. We have this mindset that that is when you're supposed to fast and wait on the Lord. <laughs> if you, those, are, those are another extreme that, you know, believe that that day is actually when, you know, you should seek the face of the Lord. So, whether you seek the face of the Lord or you feast, provided sent, Christ is a center. Thank you, Pastor Rita. Yeah, I, I completely agree with <laughs> both of them. The truth is, you know, as as long as see God will meet everyone where they are. That's the truth. You know, so December twenty fifth, like we had initially established, was is not in the Bible as thou shalt celebrate the birth of Christ on the twenty fifth of December. If you read from Genesis to Revelation, you will not find it there. You know, so like you know, um, Pastor Brown said, if you decide that you know. Your, and of course, every, they are, everyone's according to your doctrine, you know. So and you won't say that um, because in my local assembly or where I belong, we don't, in quotes, celebrate Christmas that day, you know. 
we are not, you know, and God won't punish them for it. Do you know what I mean? But then if you come like Chine, um, Chine Duna, he came out of there. Now he's celebrating Christmas with us. Have he? <laughs> you know, and it's still the same God. God still loves him and will still, you know, the same thing. So I think as long as it's not, it really actually, if you check the history of the day, not the essence of it, of the day, you know, so it's not, it's like I had mentioned, it's the Roman, you know, um, church that said, okay, let us begin, let us choose this day. And then we just adopted it that day as such, you know. So if in daylight now, tomorrow, <laughs> the Lord speaks through his prophet and says, you know what? <laughs> I'm just, <laughs> no, but I, so I want, let us demystify, let us, let us demystify it now. You know, Christmas is not, ah, that's the, ah, no. So if um, the Lord says on the 25th of December, we are all going to redeem <laughs> to, you know, Wait on it is still Christmas. It's still, we are still, yeah, we are still, the, the, the essence of Christ is still celebrated. There will still be joy. So, I, but for me, I think it's the joy and rejoicing that comes with it that should not, you know, be lost. But then, the day is not the main thing. It is the essence, who we are celebrating, you know, or the, the message that he carried, who we are celebrating. We celebrate Jesus every day, but then that day is just carved out for it, yeah. So, just because um, more people will watch this, um, people beyond these four walls will watch what we are, we are saying. I'd like to add that I think for me, it should not be a point of disagreement and disunity among believers. Okay. That's when it becomes an issue, Seth. Yeah. It is not whether we celebrate the Christmas on 25th or around this period or not. Because I completely agree with what everyone has said, that as long as we keep Christ in the center, for me, I see Christmas as another opportunity to make my faith public, another opportunity to say, I believe in Jesus, you know. So, um, but Paul said that, um, that love, everything should be done in love, and that if your meat, you know, he was talking about food offered to idols, oh my God. <laughs> as long as as long as what you do does not cause your brother to stumble to lose faith or to fall out of faith then it is not something that a believer should be put you can't box a believer in that in that kind of situation you are free to do whatever you want to do so i want to encourage that it shouldn't be a point of disunity for us as believers because as long as like we said Jesus is in the center of it. Because the argument, part of the argument is that day was actually to a particular Roman God and then now they, so why should we, why should they bring Jesus up? But why are we not looking at it that we are now saying that those gods have fallen and Jesus is now enthroned? Why are we not looking at it that way? You know, and all that. So that argument should not divide us. We should keep the focus our part and our assignment on earth is to preach Jesus to the world and let's keep him in the center of everything that we do. Thank you very much. Thank you. All right, our time is far spent. I don't know if Papa wants to add two cents. <laughs> Hallelujah. All right. Well, I, I think um, we have all spoken well and I'm sure we, we have gotten the message about Christmas and it's very clear that Christmas, whatsoever date it is, it's all about Christ. And um, even after 25th yeah. of December, Christmas is still happening because people are getting saved. Yeah. If Jesus had not come, yeah. then there would have been no way people have been saved. So even when we don't mark it, we are not the universe or the world is not marking it as Christmas or the mass of Christ. Uh, which came from the Roman Catholic. And um, so, but I think, like I said, Christ, people are still celebrating Christmas. That people will get saved before 25th of December, after 25th of December, only means the reality of the coming of Jesus or the birth of Jesus is real. Yeah. All right. And I think um, that is where 
I will want to leave that. But, um, um, you know, like we also said, this Christmas, um, <laughs> is, it, is it right or wrong? I think it's just school of arguments, and I feel it's not necessary. Why did I say so? I, I will want to come in this way that if the world has accepted something, many times we as the church, we come late when we should actually take advantage and ride on what they are doing. Example is, I remember there are people, even in this church, I've had one or two pastors who have asked questions in the past and said, uh, Valentine, what is really Valentine? Why are we celebrating Valentine? No, we, we, it's not the Valentine. It's what we want to accomplish using that, that, um, you know, that, that, that period. And I think that's what we Christians must learn. When people are riding on something, if we discover that the world is chasing something, we should quickly follow after it and be there. Then we can correct it and quickly tell the world. Not that we'll be saying, uh, you know, this is what they believe, this is what we're doing. Meanwhile, we are not affecting them. We're not taking those mountains. So at the end of the day, you find the people who are running with something, they don't have the wrong under, I mean, they don't have, they are running with a wrong notion and wrong mis or wrong understanding. Why we who have the understanding are not there? I'm just criticizing. And criticizing and saying, you know, these people don't understand. We are celebrating Christmas. They don't know that that's not the day that Jesus was born. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, the day, what, what is Christ? What is the reason or why was Christ born? I think that's what we should ask ourselves. So that people be saved. So if we have Christmas, in fact, when you people were talking, what came to me is that what will stop us if next year we decide to do a Santa Claus for the neighborhood here? And make it part of the Christmas in the community. Yeah, you know, a, a part of no, not just Christmas, a part of uh, starlight. starlight. We'll start in the morning. And tell every parent you are invited, you can come. We have small, small gifts. Somebody dressed like that, and while they are coming, and tell them there's an occasion in the evening. There's an occasion in the evening. There's an occasion in the You think families will not come? They will come. They'll bring their children. <laughs> you understand? Yeah. While you were talking, that's what was coming to me. Yeah. So, do we, we don't believe in Santa Claus, but we are using it. Drive on the point. That's, I think that's what we Christians, we must be very wise, wiser than the people of the world, and take advantage of everything we see. You know, there was a time where, just like we are just waking up, the church is just waking up, trying to understand this internet and what have you. If the world is going, we are still, some of us are still criticizing until pandemic happened. Then a lot of people lost members. And then now we are now waking up to it. When we should have been ahead. Now can you imagine that some of these things are discovered in the church? You can imagine what we'll be making and how we'll be affecting the world. So I think um, what I want to say is that we Christians should stop criticizing days, oh, okay, or what do you call it, feast, festival. I think for me it's why are we here? I think that's my own focus. If we know why we are here, whatsoever they want to call it, we jump into it and take advantage. All right? It's like because you know I'm in a brutal, or you know you see a brutal, you say no, ah, Christ shouldn't be mentioned there. These people will not be serious, even if you preach to them. If an opportunity creates itself, you go in there, preach the gospel, get people saved, and then you can turn that brutal tomorrow to become a sane hotel. I think that's the way me I think. And that's where I want to leave it. Thank you. Witty inventions. Wow. Next year, December is going to be amazing. Thank you so much, Papa, for that. Thank you. Please, a round of applause for our panelists. Thank you so much. Please, a round of applause as they make their way back to their seats. Pastor Gola Adu, Pastor Bridget, Sister Kemi Jagere. Thank you so, so much. So, <laughs> hey. My own sister, Kemi Adesoye. Woo! Hallelujah! Wow! Kemi Adesoye, ladies and gentlemen. Please, a round of applause. Thank you so much. I hope we've been enlightened. I hope we are, we are, we are thinking smart as Christians. We are taking over. Not just, you know, sitting on the sidelines and critiquing. 
when we are supposed to be the forerunners, as Papa said, please do not miss out on the opportunity to be the light in your field. Do not miss out on the opportunity to preach Christ to those around you. All right. Thank you very much.